there's a declaration of inclusion um, that had been passed by the city council and has been, yeah, I think, about 140 cities and towns in Vermont. And there's an effort to get it endorsed by 240 cities and towns in Vermont. Um, and at our board four and seven uh, meeting last week, uh, we in, endorsed this as well, uh, adopted it as well. Um, I don't have copies of it um, here. <laughs> so I understand that uh, the intent was to have this uh, distributed back to the remaining ward MPAs so that they could consider it and then revisit the issue with the full uh, all wards at a later date? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Can you perhaps uh, see that uh, copies get emailed to the steering committees and we'll I will that. I will see that Fosca sends it out to everybody. Uh, I think it was. I think, yeah, I think yes. it was already been dist yeah. distributed. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll send it again just to clog up your inbox. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. So are we we're not we don't need to add it to the agenda. Uh, so just just yeah, a note in, think, in, the, in the minute that yeah. says it was. Um, we'll put it in as an announcement okay. since we're in that part of the agenda. Uh, and we'll circle back to introduction. So, hi, I'm Chris Hazley. I live on College Street uh, on the Ward 3 Steering Committee. Go to the left. Hi, um, my name is Chanel Bastian. I work with CEDO. Uh, I've been working there the last uh, three to four years. So I'm here to talk about some updates to the purchasing process. I'm Jess Hyman with the Ward 2 Steering Committee, and I'll just take this moment just to welcome you all to CDOEO. Thank you for uh, being willing to switch locations so so, so quickly. Um, just a few housekeeping items. The bathroom is directly to the right, just past the kitchenette, um, and there's also a hot and cold water dispenser in the kitchen, so help you take tea or want some water, please help yourself. So if you're interested in learning more about CDOEO and all our wonderful programs that support people all over the state, um, there's some brochures on the table. Charlie G, I think I know almost everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Fosca. Um, I work for CETA. Most of you, I think, know me. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Jess, for letting us, um, like, suggesting the space and, and getting it approved for us to use it. So, we're meeting. <clears throat> Dale Zaria on the Ward 6 Steering Committee. Uh, Ryan Neck, Ward 8 Steering Committee. Tom Carroll, forty. Jessica Evans, Ward Three, Grant Street. Brian Pine, um, CEDO Director. I'm here to just support and listen more than anything, but I live on Crowley Street, Ward Nine. I'm Hank Prensky from Wards Four and Seven. I live on Apple Tree Point Lane. I'm Amy Prentice, and I am on Ward Three, and on the Steering Committee, and I am on Johnson Street. Everyone, I'm Molly and I live in North East. Hi everyone, I'm Erica Faulkner. I'm Chief of the Mound. I live on Decatur Street. I'm a part of Board of Two and Three Street. Hi everyone, I'm Lauren. I also use she/her pronouns. I live on North Mound, but in the Ward Two section. And I'm on the steering committee for Ward Two and Three. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Hernandez Tim. I'm with the Burlington Police Department. I have been with the department now for one year. I'm a public information and community engagement officer. And I have yet to speak to an all board meeting. I've met a lot of you at the MPA, but I tried to go to the so I'm just here for some active listening. I'm Nancy Parkins, and I'm from Ward 6, Philadelphia Hoover Street. Okay. Anybody here for public forum? I'm going to have people on my oh. Dr. Garrison? Lee? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Dr. Garrison, Lee Terry will be joining us online. <clears throat> Great for uh, the technology to work. Um, yeah, so I guess at this point we can just roll right into the overview of the uh, NPA funds and purchase process. So I'll turn that over to Shoshana. Great. Yeah. Wow. Speak louder so the folks down there can hear. What, what was that thing you said a little bit ago? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I tend to be a mumbler. So if you can't hear me, feel free to let me know. Presentation. Um, yes, woohoo. So 
just a little bit of context. Um, I've been, again, working with CETA for the last three or four years. So I've seen the way that the fiscal year rolls out a few times now. And so kind of trying to look ahead, we're a little bit late-ish for this fiscal year um, to be really set up for the end. So I'm looking at this more of, you know, preparing us for next fiscal year. And I think that it sounds like you guys are all sort of in that kind of same boat, looking at the structure and um, of boards and really talking about streamlining things. So um, all of these materials are going to be available for you all um, wherever it's decided that your documentation hub will be. So these are your rules for use of city funds. Um, and again, we can, um, the rules will be there in much more detail, but any purchase that you'd like to make needs to be uh, in relation to one of these goals. So that can be sort of flexible. Um, it's really up to you guys, again, to discuss and vote on and determine how you'd like to spend those funds in the best way for your communities. <clears throat> I'll give you another second to, to read through those. I can't really answer any questions that you have about them, but I'd be happy to take them with me and um, find out some information. Next slide. So here are some examples of eligible expenses. Um, child care for meeting attendees is something that would be allowed if that uh, it will help to encourage participation, especially how we go about that uh, can mean some different detail, but that's an eligible expense. Uh, advertising or outreach to promote meetings, you think your seven days, maybe your Facebook ads, uh, anything that you think might promote or encourage attendance and participation. Uh, meeting supplies, such as food or paper products to, again, encourage participation in your meetings and things like that. Those are allowable expenses. Things that are not allowable expenses, uh, direct cash donations to a person or family in need. Unfortunately, that is not uh, an allowable use of funds. Uh, charity donations. Um, I know in the past, we've made some payments to the food pantry for one, um, especially looking at remaining budgets close to the end of the year, making some donations. I. I want to make that happen and I want to make sure that we're within the eligible expenses. If it can be tied back to a goal, again, um, maybe related to a community project, uh, yeah, in increasing participation in your community, then those would be allowable. Um, so we can talk more about that too. If you have questions, um, we can talk more about that offline. Uh, and something else that's not allowable are supplies or services that are intended to be used for next fiscal year. So the idea is that this fiscal year's budget is for this fiscal year. We're not um, using up our, our last hundred dollars to buy um, something that, yeah, again, we're going to be using for next year that the intention is is for this year. So I'm just trying to keep keeping those those rules in mind as we go forward. And things can be flexible. I'm always happy to talk to the folks and see how we can make things happen. I, just, I like to make things happen. We got a question online. I don't know if you want to answer it now or later, but can you read it? Can funds be used to pay for meals before the ending of the fiscal year for dinner back for the new fiscal year? No. So that's a great question. That again is one of those stipulations of trying to keep the funds within that fiscal year, the, the purchases within that fiscal year. Could you possibly so, repeat what the person sent in? The question. Yeah. Can funds be used to pay for meals before the ending of the fiscal year for dinners that occur in the new fiscal year? So could you prepay for dinner in the new fiscal year? And the answer was? No. No. So like an event that you want to have in October, you can't use this year's funds for. You have to use next year's funds for. Okay, next slide. So... Before Added. we go on to that, could you just remind us when the fiscal year ends? June 30th. Thank you. Yeah, so we're coming up on it really closely. So again, I'm hoping that this will more prepare you for next fiscal year and, and answer some of these questions and give you more of a, a process to help for next fiscal year. But hoping that it, it helps for, for what's left as well. 
So, so okay. actually, I'd like to ask a clarifying question. So what if we wanted to um, hire someone to do research for us? So if we wanted to research a certain subject, um, like, uh, for instance, BED or upgrading the McNeil plan. So could we hire someone to advise the steering committee on something of that nature? Yes. Yeah. Um, I think that is directly related to one of the goals of like, um, yeah, thank you. Um, uh, between providing residents with information about the city or uh, help obtain residents view of city needs, those sorts of things. You can definitely hire services. And I'm hoping that, that one of these new forms will get it away from reimbursement because I know some of the barriers to those things are the cost and doing a reimbursement process to kind of pay that chunk is uh, not always doable. Okay, so yeah, that's a great question. So I can I'll talk a little bit more about that, about how it goes about, but that would be an allowable expense. Yeah. Okay. And how about hiring someone to do leafleting door to door for us, just dropping off leaflets? Is that something that could be done? I believe so. I think with some of the contract things, um, a contract will definitely have to be looked over and signed by somebody in the city, making sure that those fine points are taken care of. Um, yes to hiring for services and yes for advertising. What that that contract or that dollar amount looks like would would need more discussion, but um, it would, sounds like it would be allowable. Yeah, thank you. Joe's yeah. hired something to walk around with the sandwich board too. Mm -hmm. um, I assume when it says city programs, it means programs that are sponsored by the city government and not a nonprofit that is citywide. This is the goal is to promote interaction with the city government. That is an NPA program question that's a great yeah that's a good question um yeah i mean i i think from what we looked at like these rules come from the original resolution that created the npas and as far as we can tell they the rules for funding have not been updated since npas were created right. so i think this relates to the initial so like, we're providing information with for the NPAs. information about like city programs i think so city sponsored programs no. Uh, would y'all like to refer someone to read that out just to make sure it would be great, but not if it takes up too much time. Okay. Um, number one, to be open accessible to all voters of the city residing in the ward. Number two, to provide ward residents with information concerning city programs and activities. Number three, to help obtain residents view of city needs. Number four, to help provide residents with an opportunity to make recommendations related to government decisions. Number five, to provide advice to city commissions or the city council relating to community development, housing programs, the city's comprehensive development plan, water flow and planning activities, and the city budget. So as a whole, we start the fiscal year July 1st. Um, I'm not sure when the NPA, do you have a NPA year? Or is it sort of? It kind of runs with the fiscal year, I right. think. I, I think the elections take place different time depending on the wards, but. Okay. So uh, looking ahead, so the wards, um, maybe at your next all wards meeting, that again, this is up to you. You'll look at your budget as a whole. Each ward starts with $2,500. Um, make a plan. For this budget, you know, what are some goals and some programs that you might want to do in the next fiscal year? What are some vendors that we could use to accomplish these goals? Those sorts of things. Um, and we have a budgeting tool, um, an Excel sheet available to you. If that's helpful at all, um, feel free to manipulate it as, as you wish. Add delete. Um, that's just an example, just something there in, in case it's helpful. So typically, and, and yeah, I think you'll show that form in a moment too. Yeah, yes, yes. I have examples of, of each of these too. Uh, so in the past, you may know it's all been pretty much reimbursement based. That's sort of how it comes down to just because of trying to get things done and you all know how that goes. So again, just trying to get it ahead a little bit and see if we can make it a little bit more equitable so that folks don't have to have the money in their pocket in order to make some of these services and things happen because to, in order to do some of the larger projects, 
you'll need um, to be able to use your, your full budget. So if I, I would love feedback on, on both of these forms, anything that you guys have, you know, the easily changeable, this process can be, can work for you guys. I really want it to, to work for you guys. So a request for direct payment. This is an effort, again, to avoid the reimbursement. Uh, we'll need it at least three weeks in advance. Um, and I'll show you an example on that in a minute. And that will hopefully give us enough time to pay those, uh, those vendors directly. They can invoice us and we can pay them and leave you out of it entirely. That would be great. That's my goal. The second one is um, an updated reimbursement form, very similar to the last one, but with a little less effort, a little more itemization. There was a request for um, some more itemization for the NPA so they could have a better look at, at what's included in their budget. Um, so I've included that. That, again, would love to, to work with you on that. Another way to make this a little bit more equitable is to offer checks to be able to be picked up at City Hall. This speeds up the process um, at least by a week or two instead of having the checks mailed. So folks can keep that in mind too. If they are doing the reimbursement process, that'll get their money just a little bit quicker. Um, and then requesting board, uh, board budget updates. Um, you can request those from the NPA coordinator at any time during the year. We're happy to, to run those reports and get those back to you so that you can have them for your meetings and have that information. Anything that's on the reports will only be things that have been fully processed. So anything that's in the process of being submitted or anything like that won't be reflected. So this is what that budgeting tool looks like. Um, it's an Excel sheet. Feel free to um, do what you want with it. But again, this is sort of how we track the NPA expenses out of the accounting system and put it here for you. Um, if you want to itemize them by different categories that are eligible, we can do that. Again, flexible process as you guys are sort of getting on your feet that we can work through. This is an example of the direct payment. So in this example, um, it's for city market catering services, um, an estimate of $10 per person for 50 people, $500. That's a pretty fair and reasonable estimate. Um, this would be submitted then to the NPA coordinator for approval to make sure it's eligible expenses, it's within board budget, um, those sorts of things. If it's for a service and it's over $2,500, that's where you'll need a contract um, and we'll have to have that signed by the, the city CAO, things like that. But I think if we worked ahead of time, you know, looking ahead, and I know that that's what everybody wants to do too, you know, we might be able to pay some folks in advance. So that's my hope of that. Are we allowed to spend over twenty five hundred? No, that's that's your yeah, we only get per board. Okay. Yeah, yes, per oh, board. Yes. Possible. Well, at one time the budget oh, yeah, was okay. more than cool. Sure that's a great twenty five hundred. Really great question. Yes, <laughs> that's a really great. Yeah, um, yeah. So okay. probably would not be as applicable to you, but just call out the, the fine print yeah. at the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, request of at least $1,000 in goods or $2,500 services must come with at least three quotes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a general city rule. Um, uh, $1,000 in, in goods, they want to know why you chose Amazon instead of, you know, somewhere else that you could have. Um, and, and it doesn't have to be necessarily for cost. It can be um, it can be the time frame. They were the only ones that could deliver the service in that amount of time that you had. Uh, they were the only local business that does that type of service. Um, those are all like allowable choices. It doesn't necessarily have to be priced, but you do have to compare different different vendors at that level. I have a couple questions. So for the the, the invoice being submitted uh, three weeks before expected payment, mm -hmm. so that would have to be by the first week of June, would the payment have to happen within the fiscal year or could the payment happen after the fiscal year? Like we'll expenses see. incurred. Like, we might be a little too late for this for this fiscal year. We yeah, I think with the with the way the deadlines are looking, I think it would just really complicate things. So it'll it'll probably largely be reimbursement based for the rest of this fiscal year. But I'm hoping for next fiscal year we'll be able to get this in. So as you start to think about maybe some community dinners or community programs, you know, and you think, oh, we might spend 
this much at city market for something you know we can put in um what's called a, a blanket request mm -hmm. and then and then we'll need those you know invoices we can contact you know or the vendor say hey send us the bill please and oh so the last business day uh in this year is uh friday june the 28th mm -hmm. yeah um I, can i can i rephrase my question yeah um that so say for next fiscal year if, Thank you. if we got the paperwork to to you in the third week of June, could it still be processed? Or uh, I'm just wondering whether that three week period ha has to fall before the end of the fiscal year, or whether if we if the paperwork was in in the, say the last week of the fiscal year, whether the payment could still be made. Um, that's a great question. The end of the year, the the fiscal year deadlines. Um, aren't necessarily like July 1st, you know, there's a lot of other things yeah. that have to be, that have to be in ahead of time. So for the NPA stuff specifically, it's, it's generally due a couple of weeks ahead of that. Um, because this is kind of a new process. Yeah. It's kind of hard for me to answer, yeah. but I'm really hoping that we sure. can use all the days we have to spend all the yeah. money we have. Um, yeah. Would be my hope. Yeah. I, I think this year is. It's, little, this it's, it's, it's past yeah. that, yeah. But, but thank you. We we just do we do well with deadlines. So if there's a firm sure. deadline, sure. <laughs> we can meet. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I can I can tell you I'm hoping to have it um everything from you guys by May 31st mm -hmm. as a general deadline. If we have other expenses, emergency expenses for that, we can talk about that at June expenses. But I think if we can aim for the last day of May, that'll give me enough time to process things, ask questions. Turn around any budgets if if you know folks want to see remaining budgets. That's sort of that tough part, is getting everything processed and then giving you guys an estimate of what you have left. Just the funding, I can request and submit that electronically as well. I just didn't need any more yeah. paper. Thanks. Yes, this Great. is uh, printable and fillable online. Lovely. So again, and if you find anything that's like not working, please let me know because I'm fairly new to this <laughs> form creation. <laughs> so this is the updated reimbursement form. Um, you, you need a receipt for each of your purchases. So, uh, for example, City Market, $15. I would then also provide a receipt for $15. One thing to note is that your smartphones, there's usually there's like scanner apps and different things. I think the iPhone has one built in. Um, you can just scan them right from the phone, and they, they do really well at picking up the text and making it really legible. So that's an option for you. Um, if, if, if paper is best for you, of course, we'll still, we'll still take it that way. Uh, just delays the process a bit. Um, again, checks can be picked up uh, at City Hall if that would be easier for you, if that makes things a little bit quicker. Um, yeah, we need a receipt for each each perfect, but, but pretty straightforward as it used to be. Does anybody have any questions about the reimbursement form? And we did take off the the approval if um, there were questions about that, just because. It was being signed by different people and we get an approval on it in a different way so we we don't need that and the the w9 um we do need w9s for for vendors or businesses that we've never used before so you know your city markets we we don't we, we've used before um if you're thinking you're using a small vendor or something that hasn't been used before might be good to check if we need a w9 for them anybody who is receiving this Money as income. If they would consider the money as income, we need a W-9 for them. So not reimbursements. All right, any further questions? There are some online, I think. So what happens to the remaining funds? I heard these can be donated to a 501c. Is this true? Or 501, yeah, C3. We private, so no. No, it's not an eligible expense, unfortunately. I know we have done something similar to that in the past. Like I said, like we've looked at the remaining budgets and folks have um, made a payment to the food pantry. Um, if, if there's a way that we can make, if we can have it be an eligible expense, um, I'm happy to discuss that between you and the program manager, but, but generally donations are not allowed. Excuse me. Um, so for a reimbursement, if basically if you're doing a direct payment, a request that you're getting approval ahead of time before you've spent the money. 
is there a need for a certain dollar amount to get approval ahead of time if you're going to reimburse if you're going to do a reimbursement um the folks that are making the purchases for reimbursements you are you discussing them and in, in voting on them right in your meeting right um yes I mean there's there's the caveat of course that you'll submit your reimbursement and for whatever reason right. something on it would be denied it would be incredibly unlikely okay. um so we're just really approving for things like uh, the eligible expenses making sure the money's in the budget okay um I don't know if that really answers if that really answers your questions we're going to try this process you know there's a chance that in a couple months we say oh yeah the the approval process like we really should have an approval prior to that or something um, I mean, you can for a certain dollar now yeah that. i mean you can always email me like beforehand mm -hmm. and if you're not sure that something would be allowed um and i can double check mm -hmm. but i think generally like you know NPA is made by food or, you know, mm -hmm. different, right. Right. I, like we wouldn't necessarily have to be like, yes, that you can do that or you can't. Mm -hmm. think. <laughs> what about sales tax? That's a great question. The city does not like to pay or reimburse sales tax. Um, we do have a sales tax exempt form that we would prefer that you use. Of course, if you pay sales tax and you submit it for reimbursement, we're not going to not pay you the sales tax. But if it's at all possible to avoid it and use the sales exempt form, um, that would be great. And we'll make sure that we add that to that folder. Got it on Google Drive? Yeah, well, I think maybe we'll discuss it later in the agenda, like <laughs> where, where the best, what, what the best way of sharing all these documents and such is. But yeah, um, whatever you guys decide, then we'll make all these forms and that available whether it's yeah, the city website or google drive or whatever whatever you guys decide so oh, clarification yeah. online so are donations to the local food pantry allowed asking for clarification on your previous statement thank you no donations to an organization are not are not allowed um payments for Services to increase participation, you know, things that you can relate back to your your NPA goals are allowed, but direct donations are not. I know it's not the clear the clearest answer. Okay. Um, seeing that we're ten minutes over schedule on this, unless there's any further questions, I'll move us along to Actually, that. I a quick one. Sure. So you're um, you're sure about the twenty five hundred dollars that that's going to be forwarded for the next fiscal year? Are you certain about that? Is that that that's your, your budget for next fiscal year right yes yeah okay so that's the same yeah so i don't think there's anyone from the board one oh. is there? well i know there are some budget questions you're never sure until the city budget is approved oh okay that's gonna right. take a couple months so right i just want to be the caveat that mm -hmm. we that's don't know true. the budget shortfall is significant i'm i'm going to argue that this little bit needs to stay in but i'm just one voice mm -hmm. so, but i think that we're able to agree with that so i think it stays in now i think the answer is pretty efficient so one of the things, so Ward, I don't think there's anyone from Ward 1 here. Again, I'm sure. So Ward 1 has an expense none of the other wards have. They have to spend almost $1,200 a year. So they got $2,500. So they're basically starting the year between the Zoom feed, et cetera, with half as much money. I'm, I'm wondering if there could be a special compensation made for Ward 1 to get that. Because they're the only ones that actually pay for a facility to right. hold their meetings. Yeah, as, as far as that, those things are concerned, um, that's more up to the, the NK program managers and, and things like that um, in terms of, yeah, who if that comes out of your ward budget or not, you know, sorts of things uh, that would have to be discussed with the with the NPA program manager. Okay, so who's the program manager? I'll look into it, probably. It's a really good point. It's a great point. And whether the NPA would be willing to use other space that's free is really another question as opposed to if they choose a private space. That's the right, right? Yeah. Well, Ward One has tried vigorously. Yeah, you have to pay. You have more provided, maybe. Uh, they were using it there for some reason. They are not using it there now, and it wasn't, from what I understand, it wasn't their choice well, because where they're having their meetings now is actually too small. Yeah, I've been so, there many times. It's hard to do, but yeah. it's cozy, yeah. Huh? <laughs> 
Yeah, I know there was a question about the room rental. So we had broken down, I tried to break down the budget. So that was included a little bit more. So you, you can kind of get a better picture of, of what Ward 1 has spent on room rental. So if you have any more questions about that. Okay. Um, Thank you. Okay. And without further ado, I'll turn it over to both. Yeah, of maybe just, yes. I don't Thank know if you, you just oh. want to highlight this point once more. <laughs> yes, and once more, I'm hoping to get all paperwork back by May 31st. Um, just, yeah, again, just trying to, to shoot for some deadlines because um, then that so gives me. What would that mean for June expenses? So for June expenses, um, that will need to talk about that offline. Um, if you could send an email between between Fosca and I, and we can discuss sort of, yeah, uh, how much and to who and like what you're thinking so we can get some of those uh, things in, in process if you need to. Yeah, basically like because June will just be kind of tight, but if we can make stuff work, you know, that's that's the goal. You said switch yeah. back is the preferred vendor. I'm pretty sure, but I can check. Is that, yeah. is that, I mean, <laughs> I, I, that is a point I didn't put on here, but you know, alcohol, cigarettes, marijuana products, not, <laughs> not uh, allowable, not eligible under city. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't mentioned, but uh, probably yeah, safe, right. safe to assume. Yeah. Basically, ideally, like as soon as you've decided you want to make a purchase or you're making a purchase or you've made that purchase, like if you if you want to be reimbursed for something, ideally, like as soon as you make that purchase, you fill out the form either by hand or a PDF. For it's online. electronic now too. So you it's... email it to me with your receipts that you've scanned, or you can even like give me your receipts at an MPA meeting or drop them off at City Hall or something, so that we can process these as they go along, so that we don't have hundreds of them in the process at the very last yeah, minute. Um, yeah, so, so the last few Ideally. years at the end, um, and it totally understandable. I I don't blame folks at all. It's not your top priority. You've got you know everything else that that you're doing. So the end of the year comes around, and folks are like, oh, I need to submit my reimbursement for everything throughout the year. Um, you know, and everything's due tomorrow for for me. So just trying to get this ahead a little bit, and then yeah, for June expenses, then we can kind of work together on what budgets are remaining, what else is left, what other reimbursements need to happen. Yeah, and then for those MPAs who haven't yet voted on how to use your funds, definitely would advise that you put that on your agenda for this month, because if your bylaws do require that you get approval from the MPA to spend the funds on certain things, or, um, you know, I know some MPA bylaws say, do you spend, you know, the steering committee can allot like $250 towards operational expenses. Everything else has to be voted by the MPA. So definitely try to put that in your agenda for this month because if you want to make a purchase and it doesn't get approved by the MPA, then you might you might not, you know, they might not work to get to do that purchase before the end of the fiscal year. And the, the money does not roll over into the new fiscal year. So whatever you don't use now, you will lose. Nicer way to say that would be the money reverts to the city general fund. <laughs> I don't know that if we don't have any ideas of what we want to purchase, uh, I, I, people shouldn't feel compelled. Our budgets won't be reduced next year. Mm -hmm. sure. Just that they won't be increased. Uh, <clears throat> can well, can one ward give allocate their money or give the allocation of their money to another ward? Like so, say if. If, if there was were unspent funds in one ward and another ward had a big project or an outreach and outreach project that needed more money, I'm thinking like the the comics that we did, um, we did where different wards contributed to a bigger project. Is that still okay? I believe so. Yeah, we've had we've had wards, um, yeah, collaborate and and pay for things together, split a cost of something that benefits everybody. Um, yeah, that's that's certainly allowed. That's super. Yeah, well, um, thanks everybody for having me. I have the forms and envelopes here. If anybody brought anything, Bosco will collect it at the end. Thanks Thank everybody. You. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna go pretty quick through this. Um, but yeah, this is just kind of quick brief overview of Vermont open meeting law, especially as it relates to agendas, minutes, and attendance. Um, so yeah, some key requirements, 
providing advanced public notice of meetings, including agendas, conducting all business and actions in open meetings, unless exceptions apply, allowing public attendance and participation in meetings, keeping, keeping and making meeting minutes available to the public. So meeting preparation, so organizing agenda components that are usually important to include our meeting date, time, and location, Zoom link to the meeting. You can copy and paste the link from your agenda from a previous meeting because it's always the same Zoom link that's used each time. Um, names of the facilitators and names of the note takers, that's very helpful. Um, agenda items and associated times, they will commence. And then adjourn time is also really important. Um, and then some suggested additional components, IPA logo, um, steering committee member names and contact info, or if you have like a Google group email or something, that way if folks have questions, they can know who to reach out to, any other relevant resources you think of. Um, and I have created a template if you want to use it. Um, if not, just please be sure to make sure all this information is included in the agendas you send me. Um, and please send them to me the Friday morning before your scheduled MPA meeting. So say, you know, you're meeting on Wednesday, so Wednesday, May 1st. So I would have asked that you like send it to me by this past Friday, April 25th, um, because I work, I only work part time for the city, so I have another job. So if you send it to me at like 5 p.m. on Friday or like 4 p.m. on Friday, I'll be on my other job and that unless I work on that weekend, I can't upload it. Um, and I need to upload it at least 48 hours before the meeting. Um, and so Monday too, like I'm not working a full eight hour work day at CEDO. Um, so it's just really helpful for me if you can send it to me by Friday so I can make sure it complies with open meeting law and get it posted in time. Um, and then meeting minute requirements. So this is directly from the Vermont Secretary of State's Guide to Open Meetings from 2019. Um, so minutes, um, the open meeting law requires that minutes give a true indication of the business of the meeting, covering all topics that arise. At a minimum, they must include names of all members of the public body who are present at the meeting. So that's why I've asked you all to take attendance. The names of all other active participants, all motions, proposals, and resolutions made, and their dispositions and the results of all votes with the record of individual votes if roll call is taken. I think that's pretty rare for NPA meetings, but I um, just want to put that out there. And then um, they need to be posted within five calendar days from the meeting. So calendar days, <laughs> unfortunately, weekends always fall within those five days after your meetings since they're on Wednesdays and Thursdays. So I've asked that you all send me your meeting minutes the Friday right after, right following your meeting. So if your meeting is on Wednesday, um, that Friday morning, um, also with Thursday meeting that Friday morning so that I can make sure that they're posted um, within the five days. Because if your meeting's on Wednesday, five, fifth day is, is Monday. So um, that, would be ideal. Um, and you can use a sign-in sheet or a QR code, pull Zoom. I, I, pull, I can pull the Zoom attendance, so you don't have to worry about that. But I think this is something you all or we all can talk about is, you know, easiest ways for you all to take attendance. Um, there's some way to do it so that, you know, you don't have to take a photo or whatever. Um, and then, yeah, so designating someone to take meeting minutes at the meetings. Um, I can sometimes take meeting minutes, but it's kind of hard if I'm doing the Zoom and presenting for people. So ideally, someone, uh, some uh, steering committee member would take minutes. Um, recording any actions and our votes, summarizing points, you can do that if you want, but um, there's no need to write verbatim. And then, yeah, Friday morning, if you can send me those. But they just need to be draft minutes. So like... If you don't think they're, you know, completely finished, that's fine. Whatever you did do during the meeting, you can send that to me and I can post them and then you can always revise them and send the revisions to me later and I can post them. That'll still comply with open meeting law. So just a draft is, is great to send me. All right, and this is just a summary of um, 
the what I just said. Um, yeah, so this is the minimum kind of like at least 48 hours for a meeting, a regular meeting, you know, agendas are posted and then latest of five calendar days following a meeting, the minutes are posted. All right, so yeah, any questions? Okay, and you can just send me like photo or scan the attendance sheets if that's what you're using. All right. Oscar. Yeah. Um, sorry, uh, no I want the first slide, weren't you saying that one of the components was the facilitator and the note taker needed to be included in the, um, agenda. In the agenda when it, when it was published? And then I thought you said later you had to decide the meeting. So, um, yeah, let me. I don't know that. if that's a legal requirement. So no. I don't think it's a legal requirement. No, um, it's just helpful for me to know too, like who I should be in touch with if you know I need meeting minutes or you know if someone's presenting at the meeting, things like that. Um, so that's just like best practice, I suppose. But yeah. Okay. Real soon. Uh, yeah, you're moving on. Uh, NPA communication and record keeping methods. Share ideas and feedback about communication methods used and how important documents are shared, Google Groups, Shared Drive, etc. What methods NPA uses to keep records and what systems would be helpful to have in place. So says this is going to be discussion. Ground rules would be as follows. We'll give everyone an opportunity to speak at least once before someone speaks a second time. Uh, that's pretty much it. So I'll open the floor to whoever wants to lead. So I'll speak at once. <laughs> would, would it be helpful for each ward just to talk about what they do now and whether it's working for them or not? <clears throat> Okay, I have a question. Um, we have sign in sheets um, and people get to identify which ward they're from. Um, we ask for their name, address, email, and phone. Um, sometimes we get one of those things. Um, I understood that we're supposed to put a list of everybody who was at the NPA meeting. I'd say half of these I couldn't read and interpret correctly, not to, many, to offend anybody either. Um, so I just keep the attendance list, the sign-in list, with the agenda from that meeting. Um, is there a really, truly a need to write down everybody who is attending the meeting? Uh, I think according to open meeting law, that's what you said. It should be in there as best yeah. as you can. But I've run into that as well. I'll get like a first name and just a middle initial. I mean, I think, yeah, I think. And at that point, it's, it's 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 good enough to just like send a photo or scan whatever people have written down to sign themselves. It's ten pages of signs. We had over hundred people at our meeting last month. Wow! Wow! What's your Can I say what? Three. Yeah. People say what ward they are before they speak. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Ward four and seven. <laughs> Thank you. We can maybe we can chat about that then. You yeah. know what's I mean, the I, best way to do if that. Somebody, yeah. If somebody <laughs> raised a problem and said, you know, they had a problem with what happened to the meeting, and somebody says, Well, you weren't even at that meeting. How did, what, what are you talking about? I could then dig out the, the, the sign in sheets and show you who was there. Um That's a scrutiny. Not like you don't have the information. I don't want to start. Yeah, I mean, I'm just I, I personally like it's I'm not the one requiring it, I guess. I'm just trying to like, you know, say what you have to do technically to comply yeah, with think open meeting law. The way we've always interpreted in words two and three was we try to do make a best effort to document what we have and if the handwriting is illegible, we do as Fosca suggested, which is to just attach a scanned copy of the image along with it. So if anyone has any questions, they can go back to the original source. Okay. Yeah, so you don't have to like type up everyone's name, you know, after it's looking at the written sheet. Yeah, you don't have to do that. And I think for open meeting law purposes, it's just name. Like, you don't need any 
contact info, I think a lot of MPAs ask for that just so that you can keep people in the loop about different meetings and stuff, but that's not technically required. Okay. Could we go back? Jess um, had mentioned having everyone go around and talk about what each board does yeah. for record keeping. I was wondering if we could yeah, do that. Yeah. Because, like, I guess board one's not here. Does board two want to start to get some order to it? Well, I guess that is it. No, I'll keep the yeah, um, so in words two and word three as well, we have a shared Google Drive that no, I'm not a tech person. It's not a shared email address. We use Google Groups, so we can all log in with our individual email addresses. We're granted permission. Um, and what we do in there is we organize based on needs, so agendas, running notes for agendas. Um, any templates that we use. Well, what else am I missing? There's a lot in there. We also order it by year as well. Also, yeah, um, to help with organ. Yeah, make sure we're not like digging up stuff from like 2011 or anything. Yeah. yeah. But also, if we need to, but we, we do have it still. We have, but it's not getting in the way. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So that if if there are historical documents that MPAs can use, so we have found that very helpful. I think. <laughs> and, and we, we also have a volunteer who um, transcribes our sign-in lists to the best of her ability so that we have a digital version of uh, the names and email addresses to in the hopes of someday having maybe a newsletter that we could email out. Um, Word four. Hank has spoken. Uh, we're all brand new on the Word 4 and 7 steering committee uh, since the end of the last year. Um, we have sign-in sheets. We have a Facebook page. We announce, um, we, we have decided to have meals every month that we have meetings. Um, I can explain why if anybody cares to know. Um, We keep time. Um, a person keeps time that uh, there's a lot of com uh, discussions. Sometimes people are limited to three minutes or two minutes in their in their comments. Um, we try to keep to the agenda, of course. Um, what is your current record keeping method? Like, how do you keep the sign sheets you have? Does someone just like keep it at their house or go out online? Um, I think Olivia maybe too has been trying to enter in some of the names in a spreadsheet in your Google Drive or something. She did say she was going to yeah. attempt that out. So I think you all have a Google Drive that you use from what I understand. There, there is a Google. Yeah, I'm not very familiar with the Google and stuff. Um, we have a meeting for first Wednesday of the month and the fourth Wednesday of the month. First Wednesday set agenda for that meeting and then the actual meeting. Um, and then we have some special meetings get called for uh, like we, we our bylaws had had existed since 2008, I think the last time they were amended. And uh, so we spent a lot of time uh, reworking the bylaws. And uh, I don't know anymore. Okay. Anybody from Ward 5 want to go? I don't think anyone's here from Ward, Ward 6. Ward 6, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we don't have a whole lot of records. <laughs> um, and we are not quite as new. As as the, the folks from wards four and seven, and, and maybe not as new as the folks from ward eight, but um I right now am the longest serving member on our steering committee. And when I started, I was told that they sometimes used Slack, and then when the old folks stopped, the new folks we didn't have any interest in using Slack. And so I think there was some stuff kept on Slack, but not in any organized way. So we do, I think, have pretty good 
communication out to, to folks who have opted in. We do have a newsletter that people can sign up for and receive automatically at least once a month with our upcoming agenda. And again, we send out a meeting summary and we use Front Porch Forum. And um, no one had ever told any of us that we needed to be taking attendance at meetings. And so we weren't doing that until FOSCO reminded us of that last month. So we've done that for one month now, <laughs> taking attendance. Um, and nobody's yelled at us yet for not doing it. <laughs> and um, yeah, we have not been doing much. And um, I don't think it's been a problem. It might be that other systems are better. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they are more robust, but. Do you have a lot of engagement with your like meeting summaries that you send out to the newsletter? Um, we get engagement. I mean, we get engagement sometimes with the agenda in advance. Yeah. Like, you know, we sent out in this month's agenda that we were thinking about moving our gym meeting to a Saturday instead of having it on Thursday night, have more of a party kind of feel. And somebody wrote to Nancy who had sent that out to say, you know, that's Preservation Burlington's mm -hmm. event and Jazz Fest, so maybe that's not the best day. So we know people are reading it. We have, you know, people say like, hey, what time is this going to be on the agenda? Things like that. So those do get read. Yeah, and that's happened a few times. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, we've had people say, what's an MTA? So we started. Uh, yeah, that's one thing that we include on our agendas that, that FOSCA didn't list. And that description of what the MTA is, we include it right on the agenda. And in each of our, when we post a front porch forum about what our agenda is going to be. Which we think is useful. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Right. And on the, the summary that we send out, uh, a lot of times we use that if uh, we have a speaker and they have material or they have slides um, and we don't have handouts or we have people online, we send it out in the summary. And do you do both the, do you send out both the agenda and the summary via email and on Front Porch Forum? We do it. Uh, I think, yeah, yes. So both we'll go out both ways. Thank you. Or it's doing even less than that. So. <laughs> uh, but again, we don't have uh, many records yet. And, uh, a couple of years we have to do members that uh, will hopefully rectify that <laughs> with a lack of record keeping. Um, but I imagine a Google Drive will be in our near future. Hey, Jessica. Can I fix any of the words using a website? I do we use a website, right? Yeah. Yeah. Word five has a website and words four and seven does too. Good to know from what I know. Yeah. <laughs> and did anyone online want to speak to any of this? Feel free to raise your hand. Say in words uh, two and three, we also use uh yard signs uh, as well. Mm -hmm. oh, we and then I don't know if we mentioned this, but words two and three also has Facebook and Instagram okay. as well. The Instagram is nice as well because then like community members can repost that a meeting's happening onto their Instagram story. Mm -hmm. um, get a younger group of Oh yeah, um, because we have the Instagram folks mm -hmm. can then repost, um, so they can like post the agenda, and then like I always would, like do post meetings to my neighbors and like, my friends who have on Instagram can see the information. Wow. Mm -hmm. communications. Yeah, I think um, I think part of the reason I thought this was important to include on the agenda is. Just to, if there's any feedback about like what ways are best for you all to receive like important documents, like if the Google Drive, if that's works, if you want access to it in a different way, like through Google Groups, I think you mentioned the words mm -hmm. to include is that, um, all that. And I think my team was running into this recently, like, you know, the MPs have been around for a long time. And um, it's hard. It seems like there hasn't been a consistent method of like record keeping. 
for, you know, all the MPAs and, you know, maybe like generally how many people go to the meetings or, you know, what kinds of things MPAs have um, done or accomplished. Um, and I think that's really important, right, to like show people who might be asking like, why I care about the NPAs and what the NPAs do, like having some data to show them. And so I would love, you know, to work with you all more on ways that we can, you know, CDO2 can support you all in that, or like if we can host some sort of data hub of some sort um, to make sure that like we have, you know, kind of this this data record keeping, um, besides just like the agendas and minutes that are posted just to the clerk and, you know, those, there's, there's those records, um, but I think that's really important too. I love the idea of like storing that, um, like a visualize like a GIS mapping and like a heat map of where like you can see cool things happened in each MPA, just like an idea. Yeah. yeah. Well, it would also be interesting to heat map and see where our attendance is coming from, too. Yeah, I think you're going to see clusters. Um, so, actually, um, so expanding on this, there's one thing that few of the MPAs do. There's something that a few of the MPAs do that's really important and helpful for the public is that after you have your meeting and you have the link, so advertise again. So you, every, everyone's doing a good job of advertising the fact that there's going to be a meeting. But where most of the MPAs fail is that after the meeting, they don't say, we had a meeting last Thursday, this is what we discussed, and here's the link to it. Mm -hmm. So if more of the MPAs did that, I think you'd find that that would be very helpful to building your, your MPAs. You see, that's one thing that we emphasize that so when I go out and I shoot something for um, CCTV, town meeting TV, that's what I tell the people. I tell them, well, I'm recording this, but after the event, once the link is available, it's up to you guys to tell the public or your people that this link exists and you can access it here. And when they do that, that's when they really blossom, because if they just leave it up to the general public just happening upon something or researching it for some reason and the public doesn't really see that. So I would encourage more of the MPAs after your meeting, the same time you're doing your minutes or something, get a hold of that link from town meeting TV or whatever and send that link out on the same Instagram and front porch form again. Mm -hmm. it's like some of the other wards, like wards two and three has done that in the past and it seems to come and go. But I think you'll find that the public really like to have access to that. Thank you. Anybody else have anything to add? Okay, I guess seeing none, we'll move into the discussion, outreach, and engagement uh, methods. And Lauren, I'll let you take the floor on this one. Talk about the voter registration of voters. I think that would be on because there's a couple things on the other side. Oh, there is. <laughs> Look at that. <clears throat> Uh, Jess, looks like oh. you're up. Sorry. I'll let you want to go. I didn't realize uh, that the uh, agenda <laughs> continued on to the back. So uh, back in mid-March, um, Hoska had invited me to join her to a meeting with the uh, Trusted Community Voices participants. And uh, and let's see, so you were there, and, and Jillian Manton was there. And how, how many? There were one. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think around six. around six folks. Yeah. Um, will you explain? The, the, yeah, the from my understanding, they're kind of uh, the trust community voices is a group of people who are each of them are kind of um, leaders in their communities, and uh, I think the goal of this too is to highlight different needs and voices. Um, so a lot of them are representing different refugee and immigrant communities within Burlington. Mm -hmm. um, and so this group meets every other week and um, they're um, working, you know, to develop different, you know, there'll be different presentations, like well, I think maybe water service line, you know, I tried to engage them to understand better how to reach some folks about their uh, water service line inventory. Um, and then, you know, 
MPA outreach, trying to understand, you know, how to engage folks and, and what barriers there are and everything. So um, very great group of people. Yeah, yeah and, and thank you. Uh, and they're, you know, they, so they serve not just to connect with different language speaking groups, different cultural groups too. So they're sort of like cultural brokers to help yeah. connect um, different groups within the, within the city um, to city program services and activities. And so there was, um, there were representatives from, um, representing the Arabic speaking community, Bhutanese, Congolese, Vietnamese, uh, Congolese and French as well, and then Burundian and Rwandan. Yeah, if I can read my writing here. And it was a really interesting conversation because uh, we explained what the NPAs are and historically what their activities had been. And we expressed our um, desires to get to increase you know, more engagement and more diversity among the NPA leadership as well as participation. And and so we we talked a little bit about what we do and how it usually works and then just open the floor for questions. And the questions were so good. And it was really wonderful to take off, you know, this Western mentality hat of, well, if you want to engage people, you hold a two hour meeting and everybody comes to the meeting and you talk for a while and then everybody goes home. You know, because that's not the way they, it's not always the most effective way to really engage people. And so one of the biggest questions that came up and it came up repeatedly was, so what do you do? And so we talked about what happens at the meeting and they said, no, but what do you do? What problems do you solve? And it was a really good question because a lot of the, the folks in the meeting said, well, okay, so if I come to you like, with a problem, like I, I can't find an apartment, like what do you, what is the steer, what is the NPA going to do for me? And we couldn't really answer that. And they said, well, what, what do we do? What, you know, what happens when, um, you know, the sidewalks aren't passable or we have a question about something like what problems are you fixing? And it was a different way of thinking about the role of the NPA that was really good for good to have to be put on the spot to, to answer. And so, you know, we talked a lot about the importance of, of um, community building and connections and that really important role, you know, the problem that the NPA solves is the lack of connection between people and, and increasing inclusiveness and neighborliness, and that's all good. Um, and that when there are issues in the community, people can bring them to the steering committee members who can bring those things to the to the city or you know when there are city officials at the meetings they can hear from the people in the room but then the question was well then what what do they do and so it was a really good conversation and we talked a lot about um about um ways to engage the different uh, groups of folks who who they um trusted community voices um members were connected to and one of the they had they had and they had some really good ideas um and some of them echoed some of the things that we've, we've talked about in the past about finding other ways to engage with people in our community whether they're english speaking or not in ways outside of the monthly meetings um they also suggested something like a welcome packet for new residents of something like wouldn't it be great if there was a um, almost like a welcome, I don't know, in some, in some small towns, it's called a welcome wagon, where right. anybody who moves into a neighborhood gets a basket, and there's some food, and there's some information, and information about the NPA, and they said so that would be a really nice way to introduce new residents, no matter where they're from, but especially in the new American community, to, to the NPA. Um, they also talked about um, the challenge of, translate, of, of interpretation, you know, because we you know, even if all the materials, all the outreach materials are translated so that people know about the meetings, when folks come to the meetings, if there isn't interpretation available, it's not going to be accessible to them. Um, they talked a lot about solidarity, and that's something that they would like to see more, just like solidarity with newcomers to the, to the area. Um, what else? Those were the key things. What, yeah, what I I, one thing that popped yeah. into my mind that I tried to look into a little was, you know, some someone brought up, you know, um, compensation, right, mm -hmm. for for volunteers, right? So, um, or or childcare, things like that. Um, and so compensation was something I tried to look into, and I think, but Chanel and I kind of found looking at those initial rules um, when the NPAs are founded, 
basically you can't give money to support a family or an individual. Um, and so that seems right now is an obstacle to to inclusivity and um, equity um, if, of getting more people involved. Um, and so, you know, that's not necessarily something I can, you know, change, but that's something to be aware of, um, like, you know, being able to compensate people for their time to um, is really important. Yeah. yeah. And, and the, the other thing they mentioned is when we asked about um, outreach locations and methods, you know, they, um, they mentioned grocery stores. So, you know, in, in the middle of North End, we have a lot of different um, grocery stores that are, are, are frequented by members of each of these communities. And they said that would be a really good outreach, outreach location, both for, for flyers or, but also for in-person outreach. And they, I had a note that says grants, but I'm not sure what that meant. Whether they were, whether they were asking about whether there was, there were funding available for not just, oh yeah, not funding available, not just for uh, stipends for um, folks to participate on the steering committees, but grants available for projects within each right. of their their communities. And so that fell into the, the then probably not 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 yeah, applicable funding tonight. <laughs> but but that really, I mean. This is a little bit of a tangent, but, but the conversation with the trusted community voices folks um, and our earlier conversation about funding raised the question for me is, well, why can't we change the funding rules? You know, the funding rules have been in place since the 80s. There must be a process for evaluating them, and that might be something down the road the MPAs might want to consider proposing um, as a part of the process. Send so a resolution that, to your city council. Exactly. So to allow, to allow the MPAs to be more, more accessible and more inclusive. That, so that's just a possibility. But I think that's that I think that's pretty much all the points that, that were brought up. Do yeah, you remember I anything so. else? Yeah. I, I see Vicky too online. Yeah. Hi. Go Good evening, everyone. I think it's great that we're talking about uh creating spaces that are more inclusive. And I also want us not to um think that there's not work that can be done in the now when people are in the room. Um, as one of two steering committees of color in the city of Burlington, um, I wish that more work, and I'm an expert in equity, um, I still wish that more work was done before I um, arrived. And I think that, you know, it's not only about getting, I'm sorry, I don't feel well. <clears throat> it's not only about um, encouraging participation and having people present. It's about maintaining people, um, you know, people's involvement. Um, if you look around the room right now, <laughs> right, <laughs> right? Um, it, it doesn't mm, seem very welcoming for some folks um, because it's important um, to, to, have shared experiences in a space um, so that, you know, your voice does, you feel like your voice does matter um, and that you can be seen and heard and people can, you know, so I just don't want folks, I would encourage that NPAs start um, uh, actively including an equity component um, to their steering committee meetings. Take a chunk of time, it, it, even if it's 10 minutes, and bring up a topic, have a conversation to show an ongoing commitment. Because um, it's one thing to say it, it's another thing to live it. And if we think that in the now, we don't have a responsibility to foster a space where people will feel comfortable uh, participating, um, we're, we're passing the buck. We're not doing the work. So I appreciate that you brought up the topic. I, I'm very proud of our bylaws that we just passed. Um, I was an active participant in ensuring that the language was inclusive. Um, and yes, did it make some people who feel uncomfortable? Yes. Am I okay with that? Yes. Because I think the NPA is an important uh, has an opportunity to create something greater than ourselves, to, to, to 
show like, look, we can, we can uh, be diverse and respectful uh, in humanistic ways and the sky won't fall. We're not giving anything up. We're building a greater community. And um, so I'm really proud of them. I hope folks get an opportunity to read our bylaws. Um, I think they are, uh, could be a model for all wards. Um, a lot of work went into them. So that's what I have to say. I don't know if I answered your question, but I was thinking as I was listening to people participating this evening and I, I appreciate all of you. So thank you. Thank you, Vicki. Thanks. All right, so we're uh, running on schedule, but we are running late because we started late. So I'm thinking to let's have the meeting go an extra 10 minutes, unless people really want to get out of here in five minutes. It comes till 8.45. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's that second part of the agenda. <laughs> Sweet, so then we're, we're in good shape. Um, yeah, I guess anyone have any responses to? I, I have a question of which board Vicki is from that, that she was talking about those bylaws. What's going on? Uh, thank you. I don't have them in front of me. <laughs> Well, um, Nancy Logan's uh, Ward 6, one thing that strikes me is something that I think has been bubbling up in some of our all wards meetings recently is, you know, what is the purpose of the MPAs? You know, what, and, and, and even I thought of this um, when you were talking about um, Bosco about metrics, keeping track of accomplishments. What what are our goals? What we need to answer that before we figure out what data we're going to be capturing. Yeah. Yeah, I think those questions that came up. I mean, we've we've had a couple of things happen recently in our ward where somebody came to us and also our city councilor about a dumpster um, that um, a landlord had left for an extended period of time and they've contacted the city and nothing's happening. We, we've never dealt with anything like that. But that's the kind of question that came up in your, your meeting. What should we be doing? Well, I think speaking of the individual, looking back to the, your first slide there, if you can pull that back up uh, on the purposes of the MPA, I would think, you know, it's mainly to solicit feedback on policy level things in terms of, you know, solving concrete specific problems. I think the- Was it from this? The, yeah. Uh, you know, that's try right. to connect the individual or individuals, you know, with the appropriate resource to help them get that resolved. But- um, Yeah, this was specifically funding, but I think it relates to the so-called yeah. purposes of the MPAs. See, the thing is, is that you're talking about somebody who probably doesn't have much familiarity with their, their city councilors or their school commissioners. See, steering committee members tend to be much more comfortable with and familiar with and on a first name basis with their city councilors and their school commissioners and even department heads. So it's a lot easier if somebody does come and ask about that situation with the dumpster it's it's so easy not you know again it's more time for steering committee members but it's a lot it's it's really easy for a steering committee member just to forward that thing on to a city councilor or a school commissioner you see which kind of raises it because you know that city councilor is going to be coming back to that meeting most likely in the next month or two and so they're more likely to well that has happened them. in that one she copied her city council member oh, as well as the yeah. MPA steering committee members and the city council member responded before any of the rest of us yeah. did. So that's not actually like, so see, that's, that's fine, good. but that's not the point. But I think more of the point is, is that the kind of thing that NPAs or NPA steering committees or both are meant to be doing? 
was I think, yeah, what Nancy, what, that's the question that we're grappling with is not so much how to, what to do with that specific request, but what are our goals as a steering committee and as an NPA? Is it to get the attention of government or is it, you know, in that sort of right. constituent service way? Um, or, you know, if our city council members are responsive to that, then can we leave that to them? And is there something else we should be doing? Right. Exactly. Thank you, Joe. Any other feedback? Uh, do we want to get into the citywide outreach event in June or July there? Let's go. Yeah. Actually, before we move on, let me mention one more thing, just to add on to what we're talking about here. So where is one area where all the MPAs for the last 40 years have done a disservice to the community? And it happens every month. What happens is, I'll give you an example. So several years ago, uh, the mayor's office was really pushing that downtown business district. So they went up so the mayor and certain other people went around to the various MPAs and gave this highly polished presentations to the MPAs that lasted. They were supposed to have 30 minutes, they took like 45 or 50. Okay, and then more two and three, Gene Bergman stands up and says, Well, I'd like to have some equal time to start discussing the other side of why that's not a good idea, and was immediately told, We don't have time to do that. But if you want two minutes, you can have two minutes to say something. So what happens there? You get a heavily polished one side of a conversation. Same thing just happened recently with BED. So BED went to all the MPAs and they gave this highly polished presentation of why to expand or whatever the, the uh, McNeil plan. But there was no one on the other side. Like in Ward 1, there was just this really older gentleman who said the only, when it came time for the public to start making comments, he said, well, you know, back in the 60s, I took a class at UVM on the environment. And so it's like, so he had this huge presentation for 45 minutes. And then he had one person saying, well, if I remember correctly from 50 years ago, there was a question about burning wood. So that's a disservice that the MPAs do. But again, it's like, it's just like in the case with the dumpster, how much effort are the steering committee members going to put into, I'm sorry, are going to put into um, what they're providing to the public, you see? So the, the MPAs can do as much as they want. The MPAs can have a meeting every week if they want, you know, but so it all comes down to what the, the people on the steering committees want to do, what they feel comfortable doing and what they want to accomplish. So that's my, yeah. could, that's could, my theory. Could, could, could I respond to that? I was just going to say, sounds like you're advocating for a fairness doctrine. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that, it's like, so when you see BED or the mayor coming to a meeting, it takes extra effort. But if you advertise on your same vehicles like Instagram or, or Front Porch Forum and say, we're going to be discussing the BED plan. So if anybody, we're going to be getting a presentation from the city. So if anybody out there in the public wants to have some time, some serious time to come up with an alternative way of looking at it, please contact the steering committee and we'll consider. Thank you. Yeah, yeah so I think that, yes, I mean, I think that's a, a really positive strategy that would increase engagement and allow for more robust discussions. And it's tied into the, you know, the question that, that Nancy had about, well, what's the role of the NPAs now? And, and, and those, that's a really big discussion and it's tied into an ongoing tension that there seems to be between the NPAs and the role of, of and our role in sharing city information. And I think that's a wonderful topic that I would love to have one of these meetings devoted to, because it seems like we always touch on those, like these things always come up in all, in, in our all words meetings where we have a big agenda, with lots of really important stuff to cover. And then we touch on this meet, the really hard conversations, and we never have a chance to talk about them. So I would propose that at our next all words meeting that we devote time to those things. Um, so that we can really dig into it and maybe find a little bit of resolution um, or, or or at least if not resolution maybe some consensus um, mm -hmm. but i don't think that 
8.34 p.m. on Monday is yeah. the time to do that. Um, I want to second your proposal. Yeah. I want yeah. to say also that that was just what I was about to say. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and me, Jess. I was yeah. saying I would like it to be a very explicit action yeah. point um, mm -hmm. on this discussion in the meeting in the minute, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. Thank you for saying that. Mm -hmm. How frequently are there all in the meetings? As frequently so, as they're scheduled, I guess. Um, what? It's up to you all, yeah. I think. Okay. Yeah, since I was reminded about my responsibilities from the prior meeting, Eric and I did talk, and I'm just going to mention that towards the end of the meeting, so move on. I was just going to ask Jess, like, what specifically uh, were you speaking of where the, the confusion is? I mean, because I looked at the resolution that created the MPs, I thought it was pretty straightforward, and it was pretty much the points that you made in your presentation on the budget. Yeah, but well, what I'm saying is I don't think I don't think we should get into that conversation right now. I, yeah, I think it's a right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, looking on the agenda, yeah. I guess we'll segue into the citywide proposal. Someone have ownership of that? I don't see a name at that. Yeah, time. I there's just something if if the NPA is there's just something that's been brewing in my mind. But you know, if we could do like a citywide like social event um that you know where there's food and music maybe or activities or things like that especially with the nicer weather the npas want something to use their funds for maybe and this could be something that there's a group of people who's interested in you know forming a small committee and working on something i don't know if it's necessarily feasible to organize something um, to use some funds for an event in June, or we could think about, you know, later this summer, that just an idea of, you know, like more of a social event that could be citywide and, and all the entities could kind of um, work on that together if, if that was something you all want to do. I think it would be wonderful if we, um, in, in our awards, centered um uh folks that aren't typically in the space and maybe uh entered their space if they welcomed us um because if we're going if we are a democracy right we can't accomplish that if we don't have everyone at the table and um if we're not encouraging and empowering people to become involved in city government, people who don't look like us, people who don't sound like us. Um, so I was just encouraging that. Maybe it's an opportunity um, to uh, connect and ask what would be welcome for other communities? What would, what would they be open to? What would be comfortable for them? And how might we um, center them and maybe, you know, um, use, uh, you know, use the money towards paying communities to um, host if they, I don't know. <laughs> um, and then in a space that's comfortable for them. I really like that idea. Mm -hmm. But I also want to say with that, <laughs> really do caution trying to really diversify without doing the work. I'm a therapist. We, so many people are harmed. Mm -hmm. And I also don't want us to think that diversity looks like something um, because just having people who look different in a space doesn't mean that we're inclusive, doesn't mean that it's healthy. So I want us to be a healthy people. And so please do the work before people come to the table and um so that we're not doing harm and mm -hmm. but this is a, a good start you know because we're not really bringing them to the, we're kind of we would be going into the community um i just i just don't want people hurt thank you <laughs> thank you okay uh any further comments I think the last uh, item is the effective efforts of currently using ideas for other methods. So now, we'll pivot to the board of administration. Sure, right. I can talk now. I can be. I can be very quick. I think 
this was brought up a few meetings ago, but I'm more and more too. I am also a member for the board on the board for the registration of voters for the city of Burlington. Um, so something that was brought up a few meetings ago was can we connect with new residents to Burlington um, who register to vote? When they register to vote, they receive something in the mail as a confirmation. Can the MPAs also include something in what gets mailed to these new residents? Um, so I talked with um, our board chair as well as uh, the city clerk, and they said that they think that that's something that can certainly be done. Um, it would require approval beforehand. You know, we can't just put anything in the envelopes and the clerk's office would be in charge of putting it in anyway. Um, but I wanted to bring this up and, you know, Chris has talked about it a lot as well as a way that we can kind of reach new communities and outreach, but it would likely require some funds to, I haven't worked out the logistics with the clerk's office of how it would get printed um, and the financials behind that, but it would be a citywide thing. It would not be something set by board. So I wanted to bring it here for discussion and see um, how other wards feel about it um, and any thoughts. Nods are good. <laughs> Brian, question for you. My question is just that it, what is the the cost going to just be the printing and, I, the, I would and the postage, maybe? Is that what it is? I, I don't even think it would be postage because this is something that's getting mailed anyway. Mm -hmm. When someone, like, when they get their new driver's license or when they register the city hall or however they choose to register to vote, I would assume there may be, a, I don't actually even know if there will be a cost. Um, I can, we have a meeting next Tuesday, so I can make sure to bring that up, but. Uh, I would assume it would be very small. It would be like printing an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Do you guys uh, do interdepartmental charge for copying at City Hall? We can find a way to work through that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a presidential, it's a presidential year, so it's probably going to be a big number this year, right? Right, yeah. right. Well, and that's, I, I'm not sure how it would work. With the yeah, that would be good to look at the registration data to see well, what. Your residential, we, but to Lauren, we have that data. Yeah. We, we get numbers every meeting. <laughs> yeah, how many people uh register on an average? Long I'm just curious, yeah. and I'm sure probably ebbs and flows. Mm -hmm. You know, October probably sees a bump, February probably sees a bump. Mm -hmm. We had 591 new registrations in February, so that would have been a, a big bump because it was a town meeting day. Um, I'm just trying to go back and you know. It's, mm -hmm to see 327 in January. So a couple hundred, I would say, is probably an average per month um, that we could be contacting. I would, so my thought on process would be to just, it's a print, give the template and whoever puts stuff in the envelope, literally have print out the thing to yep. your neighbor and then just keep track and then charge us back for coffee to the wards, mm -hmm. you know, through our budget, like, you know, and that way, because we don't control just, I just think it's the perfect example of how two different types of outreach need to come together. Mm -hmm. I'm an immigrant and like a uh, like Western immigrant, but like I can't register to vote, so I won't be on that list. And I think you can register to vote. Yeah, locally, but then some people also don't know that and might not have registered to vote. Like I knew that because you know, like I, I work with states, so I knew that because they were telling me, right? Um, but like not everybody knows that. And so, yeah, I think it's just great not to keep in mind like mm -hmm. the two different types of outreach need to come together. Absolutely. Um, just to keep it everyone's forefront. Yeah, but just assume just I'm going to pull a number, say 10 cents a page, you know, 300 times 10, that's $30 to 300. That's really reasonable. Five, five, yeah. Eight words. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but whatever that document is that gets created, that can be used for other types of yeah. right as well so it's a, and, uh, sounds like someone's going to create a new document <laughs> <laughs> i was going to say I, is I, there anyone <clears throat> really created i i didn't realize we were doing data collection here i thought we were just going to print the letter and put it into the when it mailed out no i meant um create the thing that's yeah. going to get stuff that's yeah. yeah 
Unless we Dear have, neighbor, we congratulations ready. on your decision to become a registered voter in Burlington. As you may be aware, Burlington has this thing called the NPAs. <laughs> this has a draft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought about this afternoon, but yeah, it'll pull in all those bullet points again, you know, just because, just, just mm -hmm. that's what it is. You want to form a committee and have people interested in working on that? Yeah, I'm happy to spearhead it, but would love help. <laughs> I'll help with that. Chris, anyone else interested? Something? You can include me on the emails. Okay. I'll help in June. Maybe. Yeah, the same. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I think to your point about helping in June, I do think yeah. given some of the other priorities going on right now, this may be a fiscal year 25. Yeah. Fiscal year 25. I'm starting. <laughs> Um, so it would be more something like that. So maybe yeah. we can plan it into the budget. Yes, yeah. exactly. Plan into the budget based on. So the next step is the draft communication to get to kick off the approval review process. I think so. Review I approval so. process. Sorry. Right. And is your staff person for the board? Is it Sarah Walker? Yes. yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. She <laughs> Yeah, she she really likes it. She gives a lot of good information for it. So. Hmm. That's what we're about to send out. Oh. Well, a version of that. Are you guys mailing it? We we're mailing it to everyone. Are you board. pen? Are you stuffing envelopes or are you getting a number to mail it to the whole ward? Because we have a lot of money left on this fiscal year. So yeah. it's going to have a QR code to a survey because um, we are in a. Do you have any addicts to these? I can make some copies. Yeah. Mm, I think all very interesting. Interesting. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Because yeah, we're trying to. Solicited input yeah. from and I know your board especially with that because a lot of students register same oh, day on yes. election day, so that's going to be hopefully yeah. a boon. <laughs> yeah. We're about news, we'll also stuff them in there. Those oh, things uh -huh. they've been stuffed for a fee by the war, even. Oh, wow. Who? Who's that news person? Okay, Cliff yeah, Cooper. That. <laughs> Cliff Cooper. Yeah. Um, so we're just a minute over the time. If there's anything else, anyone wants some parting comments, or we'll wrap it up here. No further comments. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Should we uh, talk about what our time for our next meeting? Yeah. I'm going to propose, uh, since Eric and I talked about this, the third Wednesday of the month as a standing slot for the all wards because it does not interfere with any of the NPAs. It does not interfere with city council. It does not interfere with school board. It may, however, interfere with a few commissions. I think the public works commission may be one of them, but uh, it was the best date that can be found with the available options. So that would put, I think the next meeting would be what? The May 16th. May 15th. 15th. Oh, sorry. I don't know what the date is. Yeah, I was saying math stuff. <laughs> Are you proposing that we meet monthly? I'm proposing, well, based on the emails that had gone out, it sounded like that there was an interest in meeting monthly. So it might be good just to start out meeting monthly. Thank you. Thank you. Also, given these are drafts that were, you know, first pass kind of thing. So this is not a file. So, yeah. So, I mean, no, you know, is this the current board now, Brian? It might be the, no, it's the old board. Right? <laughs> I'd say it looks a lot like a salamander. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> not that you will, I'll go to your video. That's how I always have. Why can't we do that? I'm going to try to get up and down for some time. Yeah. Oh, like, this way. Yeah, that was great. Uh, I took a few in a row. Oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you get the idea. All righty. Anything else to add? Thank or will somebody make the motion to adjourn? I don't know. Two okay. quick things to ask. One okay. of is, what is the um, no website second. where we can get the information that you've been putting on the process? Yeah, so that's the question. How would you all like the, like, I mean, the um, budget presentation is on Civic Clerk and one of the handouts and my presentation about open meeting law. Virtually, Civic Clerk can only upload a certain number of documents and they have to each be under a certain category. But um, what was the best way for me to send you all like the forms and PowerPoint? Do you want emails? Do you want Google Drive um, link to the Google Drive or? All of the above. Okay. 
might be really good to have like some somewhere where somewhere where everyone yeah. has access mm -hmm. to the yeah. yeah. Do you guys prefer to access it with your own like email rather than like the other login? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I can try to set that up then. You could email too. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll send yeah. too. I mean, if you like set the settings, you can yeah. really make it um anyone can access because I'm assuming in there there's not gonna be any confidential information. Yeah. It's all public facing documents. Yeah. So you could just set that and then email everyone a link to that one. drive. Perfect. Sure. And then I have one other question and then I'll sure. Amy. Um is there anybody who's heading up towards the old north end who'd like to catch a ride? Yeah, you can try to take those things. And I will propose to be adjourned. <laughs> Favor. Bye. Bye.